Hi Pisces and welcome to your monthly tarot reading for May. And uh, this is a general reading that could help anyone who is Pisces sun, moon, or rising sign. And perhaps there's something of value uh, to you from what the cards are going to show us for May. Okay, so we have the Three of Cups, we have the Page of Swords, and we have the Eight of Wands. So the Three of Cups is a card of community, a card of getting with your friends, your colleagues, your family, celebrating, toasting, sharing, and communicating. And often, uh, you know, when we have these opportunities to get together, they're enjoyable, they help to keep us relaxed. Um, it's a nice way to touch base and to listen to others and to see how their life is going in addition to sharing about what's happening in your life. From our friends and from these type of moments, we can, we can gather a lot of strength because it's a sense of support. There's also simply a sense of fun and joy and appreciating what you have. You can see the pumpkin and the flowers and it's really toasting the abundance or the good things that are happening in your life. So on Monday, perhaps there's a an opportunity for you to get together with your colleagues. Maybe there's a lunch out that you're going to or something after work um, or meeting up with friends. So it's something to look forward to. These times spent with friends who support us and who like us are important. And to have social circles that are there for us, it's also an important part of our life to grow and to share and to love. So then we have the Page of Swords and we see this page here with the clouds behind. It looks like the wind is blowing, blowing his hair. He looks in a somewhat ready or defensive pose as, as he's looking over his shoulder saying, okay, I'm watching. It's always an interesting card to me because swords deal with rational thought. They deal with your smarts, your thinking, um, logic, and truthfulness, being, you know, able to look for the truth in a matter, in a situation. So here we have this youthful page, and he wants more experience in the realm of being uh, intellectually and philosophically there, and contributing, and having experiences where he can add to the discussion in, in a meaningful way. So couple things that I take from this, which is uh, there's perhaps either literally someone youthful within your life who is um, smart and eager to share their thoughts, their beliefs, perhaps uh, get to the heart of the matter of a situation. Or it is someone who is uh, going to be mindful that days are not always perfect or work well and it's to be thinking about i'm ready for whatever may come and i can handle challenges or obstacles if i use my sword to understand all the facts of a situation to not make rush judgments to not make impulsive moves but to be well informed and reasonable and rational in how I approach it. So problem solving is to use my smarts and to use really the facts there instead of relying on the emotional component or the knee jerk sometimes, not always, component. So a matter may call for you to be um, thinking about thinking about the information that you have, both sides of an issue. And how will you resolve it? How will you contribute to it? What do you have to add? And more than likely, it's a sense of um, uh, bluntness, truthfulness, and uh, just getting right to the point. And so 
We have felicity, we have joy, we have a lot of happiness here, we have some thinking and positioning, I would say, being ready to contribute, being ready to problem solve. And then we have the eight of wands, which is, as you can see from the illustration, the wands are either hurtling downward or they've been launched upward. So this can mean that you have a lot of things going on, you have, you're busy, You've got work, maybe play, relationships, friendships, family, whatever it may be, there could be a lot of wands in the air, a lot of projects for you. And so ultimately these projects will close and then you will launch new projects. And so it's this cycle of, of being busy and getting things done. This eight of wands can also suggest that you might have to make a decision rather swiftly. This shows us movement. And so things, something, there's a, maybe a, what you're dealing with is moving quickly. And so knowing the facts and understanding really what it's all about is going to help inform you make decisions. You may have to make a quick decision here. But, you know, the Eight of Wands about movement, it's about messages. It could be an email, a telephone call, a text coming into you, letting you know about something, giving you additional information. In some cases, it could be you know, some related to uh, dating that you could be meeting someone and getting an offer. You know, I think the old Eden Gray books from the 60s and the early 70s would say that that you're going to get news of a relationship or something like that, which is very endearing. And I, and I do like to revisit sometimes those, those old thoughts about keeping it simple. So we have a reading that has some group activities, some fun, some, some discussions, some hanging out. We have some thinking and looking at the facts and being prepared perhaps. And then we have, news coming in or projects that are keeping you very busy and that you might have to make decisions on Monday. Uh, the Page of Sword would say, as you're making these swift decisions, know your facts. Know everything behind what you're agreeing to, you know, if, it's, if it involves an, a commitment or an agreement. So numerology-wise, what do we have? We have three, four, and four and eight is 12, and 12 reduces to three. Three is about creativity, it's about group activities, it's uh, communication and expression. So to close the reading, I'm gonna choose an oracle card and we will see what that tells us. Go to the light. Always great advice. Go to the light. And it can be, it could be really, could really be a mindset that when we get stuck in a, in a day where things maybe aren't going our way or we feel crummy or we feel uncertain, is if we can focus on the light and focus on the good things, the positive things. Hard to do, of course, because we get mired in, uh, you know, what's happening and what's swirling around us. It may be dark clouds, but if we can incrementally look for the light, look for the little piece that can help uplift you or to make you feel better, then that's a start. It doesn't mean that if there are, if there's a lot of darkness or there's a lot of um, difficult or challenging things going on, it doesn't mean that they go away instantly. But if you can just incrementally look for the good or look for the, go take yourself mentally to the light just for a moment, and maybe that provides some relief. I think it's a great message to always think about the light 
you know, at the end of the tunnel. Go seek the light, look for the light. So I hope that you found something helpful here with this reading today. If you did, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, or comment. Check out some of my other monthly videos or the live stream, and come back tomorrow for another uh, daily tarot reading. Bye-bye.